1.3 billion people worldwide lack access to health care. Many of them live in rural areas, far from medical facilities. Imagine a situation where between 80 and 90 percent of the potential client group is not able to reach decent help. The poor people cannot afford the cost of traveling. Because of the expenses and the inconvenience, a lot of people continue to suffer in silence. It's a terrible situation. So our challenge is how do you therefore create this structure and a service delivery kind of opportunity by which all these elements can be addressed. In India, only one in four people has access to modern medicine. To reach the rest, World Health Partners is creating a franchised healthcare network that provides high-quality, low-cost services to the poor. The whole project is based on unleashing that entrepreneurial energy that's available, so commonly available, everywhere in the developing world. Amresh Kumar is one such entrepreneur. He's one of many in India who have long provided informal health services, despite their lack of formal medical training. But WHP has now trained Kumar to operate a telemedicine center that connects patients with doctors hundreds of miles away. When a patient walks in, in any of these telemedicine centers, she meets the rural provider who has been trained by World Health Partners to put the probes and cuffs on the right parts of the patient, and the controls are with the doctor. They are able to now access either a general practitioner or a specialist, not available to them otherwise. I just asked her the question, the leading questions which I would have asked the patient when she would have come to me for face-to-face -face consultations. And I could make out my diagnosis. WHP has also developed a supply chain for medical products so that prescriptions can easily be filled in the village. Our whole idea is to make markets work for the poor. By franchising a number of providers, we are able to generate volumes, and with volumes we can drive the prices down. In the next three years, WHP is expanding from 4,000 villages to 20,000. WHP's program is built for scale. There are about 38,000 villages in Bihar. And by the time we finish, we would have a center in or close to every single village of Bihar. About 70% of Ghana is living in the rural areas, and conditions there are sadly quite harsh. You have schizophrenia, depression, bipolar disorders, anxiety disorders. For a whole country of 25 billion people, we have about 14 psychiatrists, and that translates, translates to about one psychiatrist per two million people. Many, many people never get diagnosed and never get treated. Basic Needs is changing that by establishing a new community-based model of mental health care. Basic Needs provides a system where there hasn't been a system before. The system focuses on economic and social well-being, as well as medical health. It begins by training primary care doctors, nurses, and community volunteers to diagnose and treat mental illness in areas where there are no psychiatrists. We're shifting the task that would otherwise be with a specialist onto people who are non-specialized, but who nevertheless have authority. One such nurse, Sabsa Tawila, played a key role in the treatment of school teacher Francis Kubilla. Before they met, Kubilla's violent behavior had led the village's traditional healer to lock him up. His family particularly thought that he was a danger to himself and to the community, especially his wife and children. He'd been locked down in his own home. Now, when I say locked down, I mean his leg had been pinioned in a large log. And then they used some nails to lock it so that the leg cannot come out. Kubilla's family left him attached to the log for two years. And this is very typical of what happens to people where mental illness is ill understood. Once the nurse diagnosed Kubilla as suffering from psychosis, 
He gave him medicine that improved his condition quickly. Basic Needs then helped him, as it does thousands of others, find a new job. Finding a job is crucial to not only your survival, but also to the reduction of stigma, which means that you get accepted back into society. They have been helping to demystify mental health, and that has actually helped to remove some of the barriers and discrimination. When I started the organization, we started with a blank sheet of paper. Now, there's well over 108,000 people who've been through our program. It's a drop in the ocean, but the ocean's very